Coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. You see, if as believers, we don't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, if as believers, we don't understand the dance with the Holy Spirit, if as believers, we cannot be led by the Holy Spirit, if as believers, our sixth sense is not more activated than all the other senses which need to be disabled, we well, have most men most miserable. The evolution of television is here. Start your week with Fresh Dew with Pastor Nkechi Ene, now airing once a week, every Monday at 9.30 p.m. West African time on Fake TV. Keep the flow of fresh inspiration and direction for your life every day, Monday to Friday, on life-changing episodes online on YouTube, Facebook, Mixler, Spotify, and Twitter. Stay updated on www.freshdew.tv for more details. Fresh Dew, bringing fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Previously on Fresh Dew. When you understand that God declares your new day before it springs forth, if he needs to uproot, eject, manufacture things for you, he will do it. It all depends on you. With what sense do you receive the word? Sometimes too much brain is the problem. I made a first class in electronics engineering. When I met Pastor Charles, one day he called me, he said, look, Gage, don't be mass. You see this, your mass? Drop it. This, your mass will not help you. It will not help you. I'm in a My family is very connected to the vision of the ministry. So we find out that things, my upper school higher. We find that things happen in the ministry and they literally happen to us. It just happens. We've observed it over time. So when this all this kicking out of thing happened, not too long after, some time after, we saw the same pattern in our lives. Mecca and I had literally, we are like, pastors raised us, so we just don't hunger for anything really beyond what we. We know it's the will of God for us. We were in a rented, a rented house for 24 years. My mother used to cry. Okay, would you put build a house? See all your sisters. See your beggar's mates. Build a house now. <laughs> we're fine. We're just doing the work of the ministry, doing, my beggar was doing his business. I was doing 24 years. Then one day, the landlady just said that she was in her house. Ah. Madam, we literally built this house for you. We have put so much money into this house. Let me speak English. She wants her house. She became literally violent about it. Ah. She literally kicked us out of our comfort zone. We had had property land since. We had to go and literally build the house in I don't know how many months. If not, we would have been homeless. Our eyes finally opened to understand that it was a new day. May you be jacked out of your comfort zone. May you be ejected from your comfort zone. So you can get into what God has in store for you. Lift your hands and give him praise. God is no longer dealing with the old. No matter how used to the old you are. Many times we hold on to the old because we want a warranty. A guarantee of safety. So we hold on. Because if we drop it, it's unknown territory. That is faith. Faith is unknown territory. But we hold on. We corrupt the new day 
by holding on for a warranty in the old day. When this transition in 2013 happened, of course I was overwhelmed with a call that landed on me. I refused to move into the presiding pastor's office. I stayed in my office. For almost a year, I refused to move. I just locked in the office. And any time I'm preaching, I found out that I do that a lot now, again. But then, literally every message, I must reference Pastor Charles. I wasn't doing it the way I do it now, out of honor. I was doing it then for a warranty. Because I felt I would be accepted if I mentioned his name. So literally every message, I will mention his name. And like Pastor said the other day, like me and Pastor used to say, that one day the Holy Spirit said, do you want this people to accept you as their pastor? Do you have that uh, desire? I said, yes. He said, then stop it. Let go. Stop it. Stop calling his name. Stop it. My hand is upon you. Go out there and do what I've told you to do. Stop looking for a warranty. You will never step into your new day if you hold on to warranties from your old day. That's why some of you are not married. There are some relationships you know are in the old expired day, but they give you some warranty, so you hold on. One slap here, one adultery there, one fornication there. Just hold on. There's some level of security. Maybe you will finally marry me. He said, I should stop it. So I stopped it. And I found out I was the one holding back the acceptance I was looking for. I was holding it back by holding on to a warranty from the old day. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Am I speaking to someone this morning? You must let go of the old day. You see, if as believers, we don't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, if as believers, we don't understand the dance with the Holy Spirit, if as believers, we cannot be led by the Holy Spirit, if as believers, our sixth sense is not more activated than all the other senses which need to be disabled, we have most men most miserable. Because God is spirit. God is spirit. God is spirit. That is how he relates to you. You must be more cognizant of the spiritual realm than any other realm. And the spiritual realm is not, I'm in the spiritual realm. I'm in the spiritual realm. Men, I get revelations on the toilet seat. In the midst of some kind of sense that you don't want to be there. It's not, it's not all that. It's not splashing oil around the place, anointing oil, wiping your face with handkerchiefs. That, that's, that's jack. That's nothing. You must develop yourself. Develop your sixth sense. Practice the presence of God. Practice hearing the voice of God. Teach your children to practice the presence of God before there are big stakes involved. But we hold on because we're used to it. We hold on because we've had victories in the old day. Your success in the old day. Sometimes your last success is the greatest opposition to your next success. And you know that. Thank you, Jesus. Look at Leviticus 26.10. 
You shall eat the old harvest and clear out the old. Note the next words. Read it with me. Let's read it again together. I want to go. Say it again. Do you see a problem in that verse? Listen, you're not clearing out the old harvest because anything do them. You are clearing out the old harvest because the new has come. Sometimes, when the old day has expired, it doesn't mean it is bad. That is where your spiritual senses come. You just know that it is time. You just know. Don't think change only comes because where you are living is bad. Somebody missed that. Don't think change only comes because where you are living is bad. Where you are living may be good. You are eating the old harvest, nothing do them. Hey, the new has come. Out. Out. It's time for the new. You must walk into your new day. You must walk away from your old day. And the last lesson, you must embrace your new day. You must embrace it. How do you embrace your new day? Luke 5, 36. Then he spoke a parable to them. Some churches have stagnated because they couldn't step into their new day. Some churches that were very, they were beacons for us. They couldn't step in. Some companies are dead because they couldn't step into their new day. There was no transition plan. So the dream died. He spoke a parable to them. No one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise, the new makes a tear. And the piece that was taken out from the new does not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins. Or else the new wine will bust the wine skins and be spilled. And the wine skins will be ruined. But the new wine must be put into new wine skins. And both are preserved. The real question is this, does your mind have the capacity to handle the new day? Does your mind have the capacity to handle the new day? Is your mind a new wine skin or an old wine skin? Is God coming with new wine and pouring it and things are scattered? Because your mind cannot contain it. Your greatest assignment as a believer is first of all to renew your mind with the word of God. To begin to think like God. When you find yourself saying, your, your thoughts are not my thoughts, your ways are not my ways. I don't say that. 
I'm going, don't worry for me, I'm taking my flight. School top, we talked about context yesterday. School top, let the wicked man forsake his ways. Are you wicked? Last time I checked, you are righteous. Your thoughts are meant to align with his thoughts. Your ways, are, that you are a son. Even what you like. If you don't think like him, if you don't talk like him, who are you going to think? Such confessions are killing you. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways. So whose thoughts do you want to have? That's why you're thinking like Satan. Whose thoughts do you want to have? Whose ways? No be your papa. Is the fatherhood of God a revelation to you? He's your father. If you spend time with him, you shall must think like him. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? So God hits you with new wine, but an old wine skin. You don't have the capacity. And day in, day out, opportunities are passing you by. God daily sends opportunities our way. Daily. But are you seeing them? You may not see anything. God himself honors the new day. When Jesus gave up the ghost on the cross and he said it is finished, many things happened. But the Bible said that the veil of the temple was rent from where? I like this church. From top to bottom. Why not from bottom to top? Because human beings can tear it. Human beings can come and be climbing, right? So to make sure it is clear, no be human being do The Bible is clear to tell you it was rent. It is the hand of God that takes you into your new day. No man will do it. When you try and arrange it, it will backfire. From top to bottom. But watch this. Where had God been all this while? Behind the veil. That was the old day. That was his comfort zone. I like to put it this way. God was trapped behind the veil. God knew. He knew that there was a God-appointed age that was coming. He was patient, trapped behind the veil. But when the day came, I said, when the day came, I said, when the day came, I said, when the day came, God said, let me out. That is what happened that day. The veil was rent and God walked out. But he didn't just walk out, he walked in to you and you and you and you and you and you and you. Multiple addresses. God could have said, let me stay where I am. And finally, the day has come. I can be set free from this holy of holies. And for everyone who accepts Jesus, for every kind of criticism, I've got myself a temple. God changed address. God changed address. God said, you're not going to find me there anymore. You send any mail to the Holy of Holies, it's going to bounce. You want to find me? Check in Ngozi. You want to find me? Look for Bimbe. You want to find me? Check in Haruna. Anyone who has Jesus, I've changed address. 
Some of you need to change address. Some of you need to leave where you have been. This is a specific word for many of you here. You need to get up and change address. I don't preach quickly about people leaving churches because there's too much shifting cultivation in the body of Christ. But some of you watching online, you need to leave where you are. You know why? God has left. And you know it. The place is Ichabod. What are you still doing there? God has left. There are some places until you step into them, you will never fulfill purpose. You will never kiss destiny. I also don't talk about this often, but in a few, a few cases, very few, but they exist, some of you need to leave your marriages. Few, very few, very few. Yes, it's a dangerous area, but we don't talk about it. So people are dying in their marriages. People are contacting disease in their marriages. Very few, having done many steps, having done all things you need to do, there are few cases, but they exist. Rise to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. 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 There's just one thing I want to say. My time is up for one minute and I'll take my seat. There's a woman, God told me about you yesterday, but I didn't have the time. I don't want to leave with this. There's a woman, you hurt your child. I don't know what kind of hurt it is. Maybe when you're with a child alone, you beat the child in a way, and the child is small. It might be frustration from childbirth, I don't know what it is, but you're hurting your child, and you don't like it. Before the enemy takes advantage of you, God wants to help you. I'll ask that you reach out to your pastor if you're here, if you're online, send an email, something. Just reach out for help. God has seen you, and God wants to help you and wants to help that child. You're not a bad woman, but you can stop. Lift your hands and give him praise. Are you alive, but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life, yet to others you seem to know your way? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question. And he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide. And he wants you just the way you are. 
will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew which is 0700-3737-4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234-700-3737-4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.